Hello designers, this is a new video on our Figma UI kit series. So if you're new here, I would suggest you start with the first video on this playlist. That'll give you a bit of a context on what the series is about. You can find the link for that in the card somewhere here. But if you have been following me so far on the series, we are good to go. Today, I'm going to show you how we can create interactive radio buttons. So let's get started. First, we'll see a demo on the UI kit on what the different options we can apply on this and how it works. And then we'll start building it from the scratch. So without any further ado, let's jump straight on my screen and get started. So as you can see, this is the UI kit that we actually created. And here we'll be creating maybe two or three options for the interactions for two or three options. And you can use that to replicate it for the n number of options that you want. If I click on this box here, you can see we have two properties. That is one is the number of options and one is a selected option. So let me just go to the demo screen here. And here we'll go to the assets and add the drop down. So this is the drop down component. So once I drop it here, you can see we have different options on the right. One is the number of options. So I click on this and I can choose the number of options that I want by just select three and then I can select the options that is selected and here I can just change the text right and once I start playing this you can see that I can just select the options that I want and it works seamlessly right so this is a very simple component let's see how we can create this from scratch so here we have a fresh new figma file where we just have some color styles uh, so first thing I'm gonna do is take a frame and I'm just gonna paste image of this for reference so as you can see we need a couple of things here first one is the label and the next one is an icon for selecting the radio on or off and then a text as well right so the first thing i'm going to create here is a text that will act as a label for the radio buttons so the next thing you need here is the icons for this radio button on and off state you can go to any plugin like the iconify and get this or you can just create it by yourself it's pretty simple just take the ellipse tool draw a circle here and for the first one you just got to give it a stroke so i'm just going to give it a stroke and remove the fill and you can increase the stroke to like two right so that will look better and then this is the off state i'll just duplicate it create and copy of it again reduce the size of it add a fill for this so in the selected state you have the primary color being used so that it shows it's selected so in this case i'll select the primary color remove the stroke from here and do the same thing for the outer fill as well right so i'll select the outer circle here change the stroke to the primary color there you go we have created the on and the off state and now all you got to do is just you know group these create icons out of it so I can just place it here and say create component set and that will basically create an icon component set. You can rename this as icons. The things inside this, you can give it the appropriate name for it. So this will be your radio on and this will be your radio off. And that's it. You can start using this anywhere, right? So let me just copy an instance of this. And here you can basically change the state and that will behave according to it, right? So that is how you create the icons for it. I'm just going to remove it from here. So I'll just go ahead and uh, add the icon here. So I'm just going to drag the component that we created, just dropping it here. And then the next thing we need is again a label. So I'm just going to duplicate this one and this will be our option one. So now we have all the elements that we need for creating a simple radio button. So the first thing is we want this list here. So I'll select both of these, add it into an auto layout, shift A, start duplicating it. But before that, let me just align it to the center here and rest of the things look good to me. So I'll just increase the space to 10. I think the rest of the things looks good. I'm going to duplicate this and just place it below and select both of these and again, add it inside an auto layout. So now the best thing is like, I can just keep duplicating it and it just respects the spacing properly. And you can reduce the size or the spacing in between this. So I'll make it like five. So let me just remove a couple of options from here and now all the elements for creating the base component is ready so all you got to do is just select both of these and create a component here so let me just remove this from here and here we have our base layer i'm going to add different variants to it so i'll click on add variant so in our first case we want the number of options as the first property right so i'll select the main component here and change the property name to number of options because first time you add the component we want to select the number of options that we have for the radio uh, button so that will be the number of options and and for both of these, I'm going to select the number of options as two. So we have the number of options selected. And now we just have to create the different selected states for these, right? So for that, I'm going to add one more variant here because the first one will be unselected and the second one would be the option one selected and the third one would be option two selected, right? Also, let me just change the value for this one. So this will be option two and this is going to be option two and this is going to be option two. Perfect. So now we have different options ready. You just have to change the state for this. So in this case, I want this 
this option to be selected. Before going ahead, I made a small mistake here. The unselected state would have a gray or a neutral color. This is in the primary color right now. So let's change that. So I'm just going to select the options that we see here or the best thing you can do is just select the main frame and go to the bottom. You have the selected colors here, right? So just change this primary color here to the gray that you want. So I'm just going to select the gray that I want this one or a bit more lighter here. Yeah, this looks good. So now we have everything set properly. Now we just have to set the selected states. So in this case, the option one should be selected. So I'm just going to choose this icon here and change the property to radio on and also change the color here. So this should be a primary color. So this looks good. And in this case, we want to change this option right here. This should change to radio on and the same thing, the primary color should be selected. So everything looks good. We just have to add the interactions to it. So I'm going to go to the prototype tab here and select the first option. So on click of first option, we want to change it to the second variant here. So that looks good on click instant perfect. And the option two will go back to the second variant here. That is good as well. Let's add the same thing for this one as well. So option two, once the user selects this, it should go to, sorry, not that the option two selected. And in this case, when the user selects option one, it should go to option one, which is the second variant. Perfect. I think the interactions are correct. Let's see how this behaves. So I'm just going to take a new frame here and we'll go to the components, local components and add the radio button from here. And if I go to the design tab, you can select the number of options, which is right now only two. There is some mistake here. The number of options three. That is because I think for this, we need to change this to number of options two and everything looks good. So going back to the frame. So the number of options, we only have option two right now and that looks good. Let's see how the interaction works. So I'm going to play this one. So the interactions seem to work perfectly. So we don't have any problem with that. But now we got to add different options, right? So let's see how we can do that. For that, I'm just going to expand this one. Also increase the height of the frame here because we'll add one more option. So I'm just going to increase the height of this. So I'm going to select all of these different variants right here, duplicate it or just say option, click and drag, and that will duplicate the number of options here. And all these variants here, I want to use it for the number of options three. I'm going to change this to number of options as three. So all these will work for the options, number of options two, and all these variants here will be using it to create the number of options for three and we need to add an extra option for all of these so for that i'm just going to select all of these increase the spacing in between them okay so i'm just going to select this option two and hit on duplicate and that will add an extra option we'll change this to option three and same thing here as well I'm just going to select this one duplicate it and make this as option three make this option three. and now we also need one more extra because we have three selected stages here so i'm going to duplicate one more variant here and in this scenario we basically will be selecting option three as selected so we have four variants here the first one would be unselected this option one is selected option three is selected which is right but here the option three has to be selected so i'm going to choose radio on change the primary color to this in this state i want this to be off and change the color to the gray that we have perfect so all our options are ready and in this scenario uh, this would be the number of options would be three so everything looks good to me let's see how this behaves on the frame here. So as you can see, if I change the number of options, it just reflects here. We don't have a problem. And if I go ahead and play this one, so option three is not getting selected. That is because the interaction has some issue. So let's go to the prototype tab and we need to link the option three to the right option, right? Because we duplicated it from the previous list here. It has some issues with the linking. So let's go ahead and fix it. So let's start from the first one. So if I select option three here it has to go to the last selected stage here. That is right. And in this case, if I select option three, it has again go to the last variant here. And the same thing with this as well. If I select option three, it has to go here. The rest of the things, I think it's perfect. We don't have to worry about it. So let's go back to our preview. Everything seems to work fine. Option two is not working. So there should be an option issue here. So this option doesn't have any linking. So I'm going to select this and select the option. Sorry, not this option two selected. And now I hope everything should work fine. Yes. So everything is working fine. We can select any option that we want, right? So we are done with most of it. Uh, all we got to do is have an option where the user can select the selected state from here as well. So if you want the user to show a pre-selected value here, we don't have an option. So for that, we're going to add a new property to our main uh, interactive component here. So just go ahead and add a new property, a new variant and call this selected option. So this will determine which is a selected option. So initially we want this to be zero where nothing is selected. So I'll create the property 
property. Right now, everything is set to default zero. So if I click this variant, uh, the selected option is zero. So in this case, the selected option should be one. So I'll just edit this and add one. And this should be selected as two. Okay. And in this case, the selected option is zero, which is perfect. And in this case, the selected option should be one. And in this case, the selected option should be two. And in this case, we don't have it. So we'll just have to edit this and add option three. So now we can basically change uh, the selected option from the design itself. So if I select the component here, the first thing you can do is select the number of options that you want. The next thing is select the selected option. So in this case, if I want the first option to be selected, just change it to one or two. And that's it. You can select the default option from the design itself and all the different properties that you need will be available here. That is how you basically create an interactive radio button. I hope you found this helpful. And in our next video, we'll be seeing how we can create an interactive checkbox. So stay tuned for that video. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.